Hello, this is Nice Wander, and uh, this is uh, Thursday, March the 16th. I'm making this video uh, to tell you uh, some things about the Now Man show uh, that I want you to be sure to be aware of. Uh, the official be beginning of Season 3 is March the 30th with uh, a brand new music special, but there is an extra episode, a uh, brand new episode recorded on March the 12th in L.A., uh, of the Now Man Show special with uh, Dr. Jill Stein and uh, Kenneth Mejia, who is running as the lone Green Party candidate for the uh, 34th District U.S. Congress here in Los Angeles, a seat that uh, was left open by Xavier Becerra. And there's uh, at least a couple of dozen, well, about a couple dozen candidates, most are running as uh, members of the Democratic Party. But there are three uh, featured in an L.A. Times front page article from Wednesday, March the 15th. I wanted to point out here, um, this is the, uh, the article which is called um, District 34 Feeling Pull of Bernie Kratz. Um, now, when you use the term Bernie Kratz, it's assuming they're all three Democrats, but I wanted to read a little bit of this article here. Um, as I mentioned, uh, as you can see, Kenneth Mejia here uh, is also featured along with Wendy Carrillo and Antoro Comona. Um, the, the first election to, to a runoff of two people is on April the 4th. So if you're in um, City Terrace, Mount Washington, Montecito Hills, Glacelle Park, Little Bangladesh, Westlake, Boyle Heights, Eagle Rock, El Sereno, Downtown L.A., Cypress Park, Chinatown, Little Tokyo, Koreatown, Lincoln Heights, Highland Park, Monterey Hills, Garvanza. That's District 34. You can vote on April the 4th for one of the candidates, that, and two of them out of the almost two dozen will advance to the June 6th runoff for that open seat. Uh, and uh, the three Bernie Kratz here... Um, uh, one is, only one really is a Green Party candidate. The others are still Democrats. Um, and so, uh, the, now, now, Bernie Sanders won that district in a, um, in, 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 with a lot of irregularities, not only here in the L.A. area, uh, but all around the country in, in the primaries, uh, in the caucuses um, of the Democratic Party. Um, and I know, just speaking for myself, I don't live in District 34, but I have a lot of friends, obviously, that do. There's millions of people that live there. Um, where I live, uh, I was able to confirm at, I think, lavote.gov that my vote was received, uh, but it wasn't counted. I, I wasn't able to confirm that it was actually counted. So if you've experienced anything like that, uh, have a story to tell about the primaries, so feel free to put that in the... Uh, the comments below here on the YouTube video. I'd like to hear your story as well. Um, but Bernie Sanders, with all the, all things considered, uh, all the irregularities, he won that district, even though Hillary Clinton uh, supposedly got the state of California. Um, now, we heard a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm not getting this too much, but you know about the Russians rigging the general election. Well, many of us knew about the irregularities of all kinds of uh, things that could have implied uh, fraud and, and and with registration and and, and voting and uh, everything you could possibly imagine going on. Closures of polls. I mean, we we went into that uh, on the Now Man show, I think, uh, and I know I have uh, online with uh, some some people engaging in conversations. But, uh, you know, millions of people left the Democratic Party um, after the primaries, went to independence. Um, at that point, there still were slightly more uh, registered as Democrat than Republican, uh, but the numbers of independents had, had grown in the 40 percentile. Um, and that group had been growing actually since uh, Barack Obama in 2008. Uh, the only thing that's really different right now, last poll I saw, is that the independents, more people have flocked to the independents since they've seen the Democratic Party not only lose the general election, but have no new agenda to address that. It's just business as usual. So millions more people are flocking to uh, the independents on both sides of the aisle, although the Republicans do seem to be uh, uh, have an advantage at this point. They're, they're slightly more um, uh, registered than Democrat, kind of flip-flopping from where it had, it had been um, after the primaries. 
So, but anyway, uh, there are um, 19 Democrats running and then uh, a few others. I think one Libertarian, of course, uh, Kenneth Mejia is the only Green Party candidate that's running. Um, it, I'm going to read from the article a little bit. If any contest this year might reflect the staying power of Sanders' movement, it's this one. In nearly every poll of likely voters, a majority believed Sanders would have beaten Trump had he been the Democratic nominee, and nearly half agreed that the Democratic Party, quote, has been taken over by corporate interests, end quote. Uh, the survey conducted by Latino Decisions suggested endorsement from Sanders would hold sway with more than 70% of voters. So far, Sanders has not picked a favorite. The three candidates running most visibly on the Sanders agenda are Arturo Comona, Sanders' deputy political director during the presidential campaign, Wendy Carrillo, a labor activist and former journalist who recently spent several weeks protesting the Dakota Access Pipeline in Standing Rock, and Kenneth Mejia, a Green Party candidate who said he quit the Democratic Party over its corrupt politics. Um, and um, at another candidate uh, forum, Mejia sounded like an evangelist as he paced through the crowd saying, quote, we have candidates here who want to try to pass progressive legislation, but how are you going to do that in a Democratic Party that wants to cater to Wall Street, end quote. Um, and that's a very, very good point, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get this episode broadcasted on uh, as soon as possible, and you'll again be able to see it uh, on the Royal Channel, uh, which is uh, AT&T U-verse Channel 99, all around the L.A. area, so if you live in District 34, you can watch that episode. Please share that with uh, uh, everybody that you know. Uh, if you live uh, especially in that district, I think it's important to see it before the April 4th election uh, so that you understand uh, that different point of view coming again uh, from a recent talk with Dr. Jill Stein here in Los Angeles and then Kenneth Mejia uh, campaigning uh, for the 34th district uh, a seat in the first runoff election. So um, th that's a, a important, uh, uh, I think, to realize that, you know, um, why not? Um, and, and, it, and, it, and of course, there's, um, uh, there's something here I wanted to point out under Kenneth Mahir on the, on, this, on the front page of the LA Times, um, just to show the, in, in what I would call the incorrectness of what's re being reported here. Um, says Kenneth Mejia, a Green Party candidate who says he quit the Democratic Party over its corrupt ties, has drawn support from the far left wing. Now, I'm going to clarify something here, because here's exactly what some education is needed for. I mean, a lot of people in this country need to be educated. This is agenda of far left wing, according, well, referring to the Green Party, I guess, as far left. Okay, this these are some 10 key values of the Green Party. So according to the LA Times writer who ever put, wrote this article, um, Brian uh, Vanderbrug, Van okay, according to his comment here um, that Kenneth Mejia has drawn support from the far left wing. Okay, if it's Green Party, it's far left. Here's what they stand for. Grassroots democracy, social justice and equal opportunity, ecological wisdom, nonviolence, Decentralization, community-based economics and economic justice, feminism and gender equity, respect for diversity, personal and global responsibility, and future focus and sustainability. Okay, so. The Green Party, in that article, is referred to as basically far left wing. And the Green Party, Jill Stein anyway, got maybe 1% of the vote in the general election. So, um, those are what are considered far left wing. Many feel that moving the more liberal centrist left is what seems to be pushing the country more and more towards the right because that's what has dominated the Democratic Party and what is perceived as liberal in this country or left. But the 
far left wing, perceived as you know, a party like the Green Party, had very little impact. And yet, the ten key values are what is perceived by at least one mainstream media source as far left wing. What do you think? And also, I think in this country we definitely need a lot of education about not only uh, our own history here in the United States, but of systems and even global history. Different perspectives which you can get. A couple examples here. Oliver Stone's um, documentary series that was on Showtime called The Untold History of the United States of America. And of course the book by Howard Zinn, The People's History of the United States of America. I'll list those below if you want to find links to those. It's time to get educated. If uh, one hasn't uh, gotten more information, there's always more to learn. And let me know what you think. Post some comments here on the YouTube video. This is Nice Wonder. I love you.